as they go to school and, and they responded and did a really good job and used that time well to get some rest um, and get themselves in here and get prepared again on a short week and, and in turn we were able to have a really good practice uh, uh, this morning and be able to work on some things that we got to continue to improve on you know in all three phases and continue to grow um, in certain areas uh, you know whether it be offense defense special teams with certain personnel um, especially too that is, is now getting the play and being able to grow and, and improve on the things that we did well in the game and, and also improve on the things that we didn't do well in our last opportunity but um, we're going to need to be very diligent this week with the short week and an early early game on on Friday morning um, which uh, you know is good it's good uh, it's good to be able to have an early game um, because again it puts that sense of urgency in you that we got we to use every day and be very efficient and we're at the time of the year where we got to get our rest we got to we got to make sure that we are getting the um, the proper nutrition hydrating it's cold out guys don't like to uh, hydrate but we got to make sure that our players are doing our very best to take care of our bodies so that we can be our best here uh, this week with that being said uh, we'll take some questions what do you make of the you had two last year that were at 10 a.m i guess one was 9 a.m in san diego yeah. or la but uh, just to have one at home and to be you know, get national CBS broadcast out of it, I mean, uh, what do you make of the opportunity? Yeah, you know, this is something that, that came on, you know, the last couple of years of playing earlier in the morning, and we train in the mornings, right? So, I mean, today we started at 9 o'clock, and it was a late start. Everybody's waiting around, like, well, you know, it's time to get going. And we're just we're, – <clears throat> we're used to operating, uh, you know, the, the, the timing of it is probably about an hour earlier than, you know, that our guys are typically getting up and moving around on, on a given uh, – Tuesday, Wednesday throughout the practice week. So, um, yeah, it is. It's an early riser, but you know what? It's uh, it's about getting up and getting ready to roll. And um, you do you do lose a little bit of preparation time again, like we talked about, because as soon as uh, you put your head on that pillow on Thursday night, that's it. When you get up and you get, it's time to go on Friday morning. So, the fact that it's Black Friday, and I mean, uh, you know, you guys obviously know what you have after that. But how much do you need fans to still show up for this game? And I know. There's nothing technically on the line, but I mean, how do you, what do you There's say? a lot on the line, man. There's a, it's, it's senior day. Um, we're defending the blue. Um, you know, it's the day after Thanksgiving. And to, you're, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of sales, but who goes out and shops anyway? And everybody shops online and gets a box delivered to their doorstep. So that's what we're counting on, BJ, that people are shopping online and that they're going to be, you know, here bright and early celebrating uh, uh, Black Friday with us right here in the parking lot in Albertson Stadium tailgate and creating an atmosphere that obviously is second to none and to have um, the stadium full for the seniors uh, you know and, and their last uh, uh, obviously regular season home game here is is going to be a treat for those guys and again the urgency um, that they had to prepare with today you know they know they know there's a very good team coming in here um, that has played very well here of recent and has been very productive it's an aggressive team a team that uh, is going to go after, uh, you know, is going to work very diligently and aggressively on special teams. Uh, they blocked uh, some punts. Um, they've they've had numerous fakes within their special teams. They're aggressive on offense. Um, they're a spread team, but um, make no mistake, they're going to run the ball and be very physical at the line of scrimmage. They run the ball for a lot of yards each and every game, and they have a lot of rushing attempts. And what comes off of that is a vertical. Uh, you know, pass game off the, the run game and play actions and things like that where they're trying to capitalize on space and defensively, um, you know, they've done a good job mixing it up, you know, last couple of years there um, out of their four man front, you know, playing coverage and, and then playing really aggressive with six man pressures and five man pressures. And so um, we got to be really diligent again this week to be able to prepare ourselves for the objectives that are set out in front of us. Um, obviously, knowing who our opponent is and getting ourselves ready to be our very best. You were, uh, you kind of were talking about still processing the game 30 minutes later. Um, when you went back and we rewatched the last two minutes, um, you know, what was that like? Yeah, it was. Um, there are a lot of moving parts, and even to, uh, you know, just uh, watching. The, if you're there in person or you're watching on TV, you see what's just unfolding on the field. But there's a lot of moving parts that are going on too, and the operation from the sidelines from the booth down to the sidelines and everything in between. And so I would just say this, if there was a reality TV show that could have been, that could have filmed all of it and heard the audio of everything going on, I mean, that's what we train for, is um, to handle the moment we're in and whatever circumstances come up to be resilient and to respond and uh, to create a response uh, that is gonna help us uh, achieve what we want to and, and just really proud of the guys 
um, the coaches, the players of being resilient and finding a way to get it done, you know, playing against a really good team on the road, um, you know, late in November. You mentioned, uh, you know, you always teach guys if there's an interception, hey, give the give the defense a chance. But when you go back and rewatch, like, how how well did Taylor make that tackle on the read? I, he flipped his hips and seemed like he got a good angle on that tackle. Well, um, I think the first thing Coach I own coaches tackling, the first thing is, is, you know, he owned his leverage. He had to create his leverage, and that's what he did when you seen that on the film when you went back and watched it. And again, the care factor by our players, even in, you know, circumstances that may obviously are not ideal, they're taught and they're trained, and, and the guys that care and that practice a certain way and that sit in this meeting room right here and get taught and learn and listen, you know, those situations are going to come up. You never know when you're going to need the different fundamentals, the different tools within the game. So obviously very huge for uh, Taylor to get that young man on the ground and to give us another shot. Uh, you guys are uh, talking about kind of the emotional swings. Uh, did you take us through your emotions on Ashton Gentis? I think it ended up being a nine-yard run, but it could have been a four-yard loss, and then you retreated to the 50, and then you ended up picking up nine somehow. What, what were your emotions as that was going on? Well, I mean, it's just like the, that That first play was coming towards our sideline. He gets bottled up. And, uh, you know, he puts his foot in the ground and first off retreats about five yards. I was like, oh, boy. And then you flash your eyes to the other side of the field. Like, good decision. Here we go. Let's go. But uh, initially, it's not the angle you want to see a tailback take. But again, these guys are aggressive. They're trained. They're taught well. Um, and it's just awesome to see um, him come into his own, him you know, he knows it too. The most important thing is to stay humble and hungry and the way he approaches it, the way we just were out there on the practice field, um, the way he just practiced out there right now, coming off a game, you know, the day before yesterday and the way those guys train, that's that, that hunger and that humbleness that we need, you know, going forward. Those are the type of young men that will continue to recruit here, um, the right people uh, with a certain skill set that will fill, fulfill a certain role. You guys have a chance to go five and one at home this season. After going three and three last year, what does it mean to, to defend the Blue as well as you are this year? Well, you know what? I mean, it's uh, every week is a new opportunity to grow and to be our best. And um, you know, there's certain to be something to be said about when we play here at home and what goes into that. And so, uh, just like we spoke about earlier, what does it mean? It means that we handle our process really well. We have urgency, and then on a short week, we don't waste any time. We take care of our bodies. We get our rest. We don't have school, but we got homework to do too. So there's plenty of things that we need to stay locked in on and what we're doing, you know, as well as uh, taking a minute to be thankful, you know, because this is the week of Thanksgiving and that's a big deal to us to have grace and to be grateful for the things that we have, to be grateful for the opportunity to, to go to college and get a college degree and uh, to be a part of something like this for all of us, for us to be able to work here, you know, dur during the course of this week, it is a grind. It is a grind. We are away from our families. But the impact that we have, um, you know, that we're blessed to have and, and get the people we're able to be around this time of the year, those are the things that we're very thankful for. And uh, we will continue to build off of that and live it in grace and, as we grow forward. Whether that's some, yeah. some of the sixth year guys like Tyreek or Zeke or just the traditional seniors, uh, what, what do you make of the senior class? So, I mean, it's a, it's a big group. And where are they? Are we talking about a fourth, fifth, or sixth? So, um, much like we did last year. Everybody that has a senior tag on them has the opportunity to walk. We're not just like everything. We're focused on right now and the guys that have exhausted eligibility. Obviously, uh, this this is uh, this is it if they're in their sixth year. But the fifth, fourth year guys, like we'll get to all that stuff later. And, and uh, you know the opportunity for um, you know with the COVID year and all that that presents uh, opportunities, more opportunities for a bunch of these young men that are tremendous guys and that uh, obviously have done a lot for this program and uh, um, will continue to do a lot for this program. You make, if I look correctly, 19 was the only school year here that we had an undefeated Mountain West season. There wasn't, it was a full season. So what would that mean and, and how much is that thought of trying to go into the season? I don't even know. I just, was, since you said that right now, it's not something I really thought about. So, I mean, I guess, I mean, obviously uh, the ability to win your games, you know, and that's what we set out to do at the beginning of the year. So, you know, that's obviously, that would be a big deal, but that's not something we're, we're focused on being one another this week. You look at um, the three turnovers in that game, and uh, it seemed like Scott Matlock impacted each of them in one way, shape, or form, whether he was trying to tip plays in the secondary or getting guys lined up and creating pressure. 
after the game, JL was saying that he saw, you know, the, the alignment of what Wyoming was running out there on his last interception. He said he knew that they were going to attack him. As much as you guys put into trying to develop, you know, the, the mental side of the game as a coach, what is it like to hear, you know, and see all that stuff pay off for those guys that, that pour in in the film room? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I th that's a big part. There's that's why there's so. You know, there's a, a lot of guys that come through this program that end up becoming coaches. You know, it's not for everybody. It's, we just talked about it. There's a lot that goes into being a coach. But for a lot of us that have been here, I mean, we got taught a certain way. We got taught the game a certain way. Um, we continue to do that, obviously, with our players. But it's their passion, their willingness to learn, to study the game, and to find the joy and the love of preparing each week of what, what are the new objectives each week. And that's the big deal. Like, to be your best every week, you you've got to put in and what you put into anything is what you're going to get out of it and so um you know it's awesome for those guys to reap the benefits of putting in that extra film study you know as we talk about taking care of their bodies so that's the same thing too how we take care of our mental and our physical is everything right now how we prepare ourselves mentally for for this game is everything it's going to take our best this week um you know in our preparation so it's awesome to see, um, again, it's something we stressed with JL a couple weeks back in terms of his eye progression and how he's playing routes um, in, in specific in relation to his techniques and what his eye progression is, and he's done a better job with that. He's been a done a better job studying it in the film room. He's done a better job with it at practice, and then obviously um, he's been able to capitalize in two huge, huge situations there um, a couple days ago. You mentioned, obviously, you know, this is a big game, the blue and senior day, but how do you balance, um, you know, wanting to get maybe some, some, some young guys out there, or, or you know, put some of the, the guys who are a little banged up on, on the sideline, knowing that there's a you know a bigger goal still out there. Next question. Cortez Hogan, this is thing we're locked in this week. He yeah. Had, he had five tackles and obviously dealt with some stuff early on, but once he's yeah. got back and got out there, what have you seen from Cortez? Yeah. So, the experience every time he gets on the field, the experience, right, BJ? He's got to get out there and he's got to do it. He's going to do things right. No different for him than anybody else that is playing in their second, first, second, third game. Like every one of those opportunities um, to learn, to grow. Okay, this is why we have to do it this way. We do things right. Maybe we don't do something right. But being able to self-correct and know, okay, I can do that better. I see why I got to do it better. Um, and that's what creating the dependable depth is. And I'll be honest with you, like there's some – there's some younger guys that came off that field the other day. We weren't even back to the locker room, and they're talking about the things that they know that uh, they can and they will do better, and that they got. They went out there today and worked really diligently on it again. That care factor, that humility, that buy-in, that's everything, you know. And, and so, guys like Cortez will continue to grow. Obviously, we'll need them to continue to grow uh, down the stretch, uh, you know, as we as we continue to work to be one and over with each one of these opportunities. Oh, Billy Bowman's touchdown catch. Touchdown catch uh, yeah. He mentioned that he didn't idea the ball was going to come to him because of the look the defense gave him. Where is his football IQ right now? I mean, Billy. Billy's played really well the last couple games, you know. Um, and uh, it's awesome to see a guy that, you know, has been persistent through it all. Maybe I hadn't got a lot of targets in the last couple years and all those things and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, he stayed committed. He's been persistent. He's been a good leader. He's been a great teammate. And now what? What you're seeing is, you know, the benefits of um, staying committed to what is really important. And it was awesome to see him go up in a contested situation, get the body position, and finish in a, in a big time moment like that. And we'll continue to, um, you know, we'll continue to provide those opportunities not only for him but some, for some of the other guys that are making plays down the field so that they can capitalize and help the team. What do you see in Lagarde, the quarterback for Utah State? It's like he's big, looks like he's mobile. And yeah, so I mean, he's a dual threat quarterback, and what I, you know, what you see is a team that is uh, catching stride and growing down the stretch here. Um, they've they scored 30 points a game here recently while he's been leading their offense, and uh, um, it's an addition. You know, their their running attack, Tyler's ran the ball for a thousand yards just like uh, George has, and so he's a really good back with with a big uh, athletic offensive line up front. Um, so he adds an additional number to the run game with his ability to run the ball, but has the ability also to put the ball down the field in the vertical pass game. They've got some wide receivers that have been um, extremely productive um, in terms of the amount of catches and yards, um, whether it be in the vertical pass game or even the intermediate pass game. So, um, you know, they again, we see a team, an offense specific to your question that is uh, 
you know, creating momentum and it scored a lot of points in their in their last, uh, you know, at least in their last three games and uh, the last six games have won five of them. Whether it be Ashton or, or George, the amount of missed tackles they've been able to generate this year, is, it seems like it's at a, at a pretty high level. What um, impact is Keith Bonifaz? You know, that were 11, 12 weeks, whatever in the season. What, what impact has he had on that, that room and their development? Yeah, and you don't just, you know, you see, you know, Fado's been there. T. Crow's been in there, KD's been in there. So when you set a certain standard and you build confidence through preparation, drill work, development, and knowledge, um, that's where you get the development. That's where guys, um, you know, you, you see what happens on game day, but all the hard work that goes in and the progression of which we do it, I mean, that's, that's different. And so, we came into the season talking about like besides George, who's gonna play running back and all those things. But that's college football. It's about development. It's about being consistent and holding a standard and not wavering on that standard. What is fair is consistency, and that's what he does. And his standards are high, and the players love him for it because he doesn't only care about their development, but he cares about them as people. And when you when someone knows that you really care about them as a person. And it's not just about how many rushing yards, touchdowns, but the overall development of them as people. Now we can work together and go places. What's impressed you with uh, Andrew Simpson the last two weeks uh, as he's gotten two starts? Well, I mean, I will say this. Uh, he's made some tackles and things like that. But just like we were talking about with Cortez, he's got a lot of growth to do. He's got a lot of growth to do with his process and how consistent he is throughout the course of the week. And it will help him continue to grow. Um, he, like you just said, he's in his second start. Um, he's got a lot to learn. Um, he does have some ability, um, but the position he plays requires a lot of it from a communication and recognition standpoint. And the more diligent he can be with his process in the meeting rooms and, and obviously on the practice field and be deliberate with his reps, he'll continue to grow and um, you know be more efficient and consistent. You mentioned being a short turnaround and obviously an early game. What if the game was say at seven o'clock, like what do you what do you usually do on game day that you can't do when it's at ten AM? Well, um, 10 a.m. We're, we're getting up at, uh, you know, we're starting at 5, 5 a.m. So the game's at 7 o'clock. You got a whole morning. There's time to watch some little extra film, get them up, move them around, maybe a little walkthrough, you know, things like that. that. That's why I say when you put your head down on the pillow the night before, when that alarm clock goes off and the two feet hit the ground, it's time to roll. Yeah, uh, get back to the real quick. George, I mean, I don't know where you guys would be about George, but. He's not too active on social media. I don't know how often he tweets, but after the Does game, that bug you guys? No. No, but after the game, he just tweeted that, you know, he, he goes, I promise I'll be better or something along those lines. He, he seemed pretty tough on himself when he rarely, you know, puts the ball on the ground. Did, did you, was there any response to that? To, you know, I told him I love him, and I, I, I would ride with him any day of the week. Like, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, by his response, he don't go on social media. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. But for him to show how much he cares and going on something and using a platform that he doesn't even use to show his remorse, I mean, shoot. Uh, like I said, I'll ride with him any day of the week. Go. Cool. Uh, All right, one more. So, yeah, because we got to get rolling here. Like you said, what did you see out of Taylor in that fourth quarter drive? Well, um, there were many of them. Um, but uh, what, what we saw out of him overall, okay? Number one is for him to continue to grow and adapt and adjust within a game. And he will have to continue to do that. Um, you know, from the standpoint of what you see on film is not always what you get within the game. And then the adjustments, like this week, you know, Vanda's got the capabilities of bringing a lot of different pressures. We're going to have to adjust to some of this stuff. You know, in time, coaches, players, and all those things. And so his ability to learn and grow and have the confidence to be able to um, go one drive at a time, learn, get stronger, come to the sideline, learn what's going on on the field, what is the game plan, where are the things that are going on, how will we need, how will we need to adjust? And that's something that obviously um, is huge with our coaching staff um, as well and our communication on the sideline. So um, you know it was awesome to see uh, you know TG lead a two-minute drive there just before the half. That experience. We talked about it a few weeks ago, and we saw him put one together and do a really good job there. So those are things that we just got to continue to grow off of as we move forward. Um, I appreciate you guys. 
Again, looking forward to seeing Bronco Nation bright and early Friday morning. Um, have a happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody enjoys their week and uh, is able to spend some time with, with family and uh, show appreciation and grace for all the things we have. Appreciate you guys.